Question 1. Which of the following statements regarding nasal septum is most correct? A. It may be slightly deviated to one side or the other. B. The nasal septum is comprised mainly of cartilage. C. Inflammation of the nasal septum is common during infection. D. The nasal septum separates the oropharynx and nasopharynx. The correct answer is A. It may be slightly deviated to one side or the other. Question 2. Cerebrospinal fluid is manufactured in the underscore of the brain and serves to underscore a subdural space, prevent infection. B. Cortex, protect the brain injury. C. Ventricles, cushion and protect the bane. D. Subarachnoid space, oxygenate the brain. The correct answer is C. Ventricles, cushion and protect the bane. Question 3. General care for an eye injury involves A. Applying direct pressure to the globe. B. Irrigating the eye with sterile saline solution. C. Covering both eyes to minimize further injury. D. Applying a cold compress to the eyeball. The correct answer is C. Covering both eyes to minimize further injury. Question 4. A patient with a disconjugate gaze following an ocular injury A most likely has a concomitant basilar skull fracture. B. Should have eyes applied to the eyes to prevent blindness. C. Has discoordination between the movements of both eyes. D. Should be treated by irrigating both eyes for 20 minutes. The correct answer is C. Has discoordination between the movements of both eyes. Question 5. Alkali or strong acid burns to the eye should be irrigated for an absolute minimum of underscore minutes A. 10. B. 15. C. 20. D. 30. The correct answer is C. 20. Question 6. A ruptured tympanic membrane A commonly results in permanent hearing loss. B. Is characterized by CSF leakage from the ears. C. Commonly leads to an infection of the middle ear. D. Is extremely painful but typically heals spontaneously. The correct answer is D. Is extremely painful but typically heals spontaneously. Question 7. The primary risk associated with oral and dental injuries is A. Malocclusion. B. Intraoral infection. C. Permanent tooth loss. D. Airway compromise. The correct answer is D. Airway compromise. Question 8. Common clinical findings associated with a subdural hematoma including all of the following, except a rapidly increasing ICP. B. An underlying skull fracture. C. A fluctuating level of consciousness. D. Unilateral hemiparesis or slurred speech. The correct answer is A. Rapidly increasing ICP. Question 9. Chronic subdural hematomas are most commonly seen in the patients who A. Are less than 2 years of age. B. Have alcoholism. C. Are prone to hypoglycemia. D. Have high cholesterol. The correct answer is B. Have alcoholism. Question 10. When assessing the severity of a traumatic brain injury, the single most important assessment parameter is the patient's A. Initial GSC score. B. Blood pressure. C. Level of consciousness. D. Response to verbal stimuli. The correct answer is C. Level of consciousness. Question 11. The most effective method for decreasing morbidity and mortality associated with spinal cord injury is a rapid transportation to a trauma center. B. Public education and prevention strategies. C. Minimizing scene time to 10 minutes or less. D. Routine use of spinal motion restriction precautions. The correct answer is B. Public education and prevention strategies. Question 12. The spine A. Is the major structural component of the axial skeleton. B is comprised of irregular bones that are all fused together. C. Consists of 23 bones articulating to form the spinal column. D. Provides support and strength for the appendicular skeleton. The correct answer is A. Is the major structural component of the axial skeleton. Question 13. Because of its weight-bearing capacity, the underscore spine is especially susceptible to injury A. Cervical. B. Thoracic. C. Lumbar. D. Coccygeal. The correct answer is C. Lumbar. Question 14. As the body ages, the intervertebral discs A calcify and become more rigid. B enlarge and result in increased height. C are not able to protect the spinal cord. D lose water content and become thinner. The correct answer is D. Lose water content and become thinner. Question 15. The underscore is a continuation of the central nervous system and exits the skull through the underscore A vagus nerve, spinal cord. B spinal cord, foramen magnum. C. Brain stem, verebral foramen. D. Medullar, cauda equina. The correct answer is B. Spinal cord, foramen magnum. Question 16. A compression or burst fracture of the cervical spine would most likely occur following A. 
a direct blow to the occipital region of the skull. B. Rapid acceleration following a motor vehicle crash. C. Axial loading after a patient falls and lands feet first. D. A significant fall in which the patient lands head first. The correct answer is D. A significant fall in which the patient lands head first. Question 17. In contrast to secondary spinal cord injury, primary spinal cord injury occurs A. From progressive swelling. B. At the moment of impact. C. From penetrating mechanisms. D. Within 24 hours of the injury. The correct answer is B. At the moment of impact. Question 18. A complete spinal cord injury to the upper cervical spine A results in quadriplegia but the patient usually retains his or her ability to breathe spontaneously. B. Is not compatible with life and results in immediate death due to cardiopulmonary failure. C. Will result in permanent loss of all cord-mediated functions below the level of the injury. D. Results in neurologic dysfunction that is considered to be permanent if it lasts longer than 24 hours. The correct answer is C will result in permanent loss of all cord-mediated functions below the level of the injury. Question 19. Signs of neurogenic shock include all of the following except A. Bradycardia. B. Flush skin. C. Diaphoresis. D. Hypothermia. The correct answer is C. Diaphoresis. Question 20. Patients with evidence of trauma above the underscore should be considered at risk for an associated spine injury A. Diaphragm. B. Pelvis. C. Umbilicus. D. Clavicles. The correct answer is D. Clavicles. Question 21. Following a spinal injury, a patient presents with abdominal breathing and use of the accessory muscles in the neck. This suggests injury at or above. A. C1 C2. B. C3 C4. C. T1 T4. D. T2 T5. The correct answer is B. C3 C4. Question 22. Any motor or sensory deficits noted during the neurologic examination of a patient with a possible spinal cord injury A indicate a complete spinal cord injury. B. Require you to repeat the initial assessment. C. Should be documented and monitored. D. Must be reported to the hospital at once. The correct answer is C. Should be documented and monitored. Question 23. If the mechanism of injury indicated that your patient may have sustained a spinal cord injury A. Contact medical control to determine if spinal immobilization is needed. B. Assume that a spine injury exists, regardless of the neurologic findings. C. Apply a cervical collar and transport the patient in a position of comfort. D. Fully immobilize the spine only if gross neurological deficits are present. The correct answer is B. Assume that a spine injury exists, regardless of the neurologic findings. Question 24. When moving an injured patient from the ground onto a long backboard, it is generally preferred that you A. Slide the patient onto the backboard. B. Use the four-person log roll technique. C. Log roll the patient away from you. D. Apply the KED first. The correct answer is B. Use the four-person log roll technique. Question 25. An injured patient's head should be secured to the long backboard only after A. You have placed padding under the shoulders. B. His or her torso has been secured adequately. C. Both of the legs and torso are secured to the board properly. D. A vest-style immobilization device has been applied. The correct answer is B. His or her torso has been secured adequately. Question 26. When immobilizing a sitting patient with a vest type extrication device, you should manually stabilize his or her head and then A. Apply an appropriately sized cervical collar. B. Perform a rapid assessment to detect life threats. C. Assess distal pulse and sensory and motor function. D. Carefully place the vest device behind the patient. The correct answer is C. Assess distal pulse and sensory and motor function. Question 27. When performing the standing takedown technique to immobilize a patient's spine, the patient is secured to the long backboard with straps A while still standing position. B. After the board is placed on the stretcher. C. After a cervical collar has been applied. D. After he or she is lowered to the ground. The correct answer is D. After he or she is lowered to the ground. Question 28. A motorcycle of football helmet should be removed if A. The patient complains of severe neck pain and the helmet fits snugly. B. You are going to transport the patient to a medical treatment facility. C. The patient is breathing shallowly and access to the airway is difficult. D. You are properly trained in the technique, even if you are by yourself. The correct answer is C. The patient is breathing shallowly and access to the airway is difficult. Question 29. A 52-year-old man sustained superficial and partial thickness burns to his left arm approximately 15 minutes ago when he opened the radiator cap on his car. He is conscious, alert, 
and in severe pain. His BP is 138 76 of a millimeter Hg, pulse is 110 beats per minute and strong, respirations are 22 breaths per minute and regular, and his oxygen saturation is 99% on room air. He denies any other injuries. Initial management for this patient involves A. Applying ice to the burn to provide immediate pain relief. B. Applying cool, wet dressings to the burn and elevate his arm. C. Starting in 4 of normal saline and administering 2 mg of morphine. D. Administering oxygen and applying an anesthetic cream to the burn. The correct answer is B. Applying cool, wet dressings to the burn and elevate his arm. Question 30. A 30-year-old man presents with jaw and neck stiffness and fever. During your assessment, he tells you that he cut his hand on a piece of metal about a week ago. You should be most suspicious that this patient has A. Tetanus B. Meningitis C. A viral infection D. A staph infection The correct answer is A. Tetanus Question 31. You are dispatched to a residence for a man who cut his hand with a chainsaw. Upon arriving at the scene your first action should be to A. Immediately gain access to the patient. B. Apply gloves, a gown, and facial protection. C. Determine if air medical transport is available. D. Carefully assess the scene for safety hazards. The correct answer is D. Carefully assess the scene for safety hazards. Question 32. You are dispatched to a motor vehicle versus pedestrian collision. Upon arrival, you notice an elderly adult patient who has been struck by a car, the patient is not responding to any stimuli. The concept permitting you to begin treatment of this patient based? On, A. Implied consent. B. Good Samaritan consent. C. Expressed consent. D. Mandatory consent. The correct answer is A. Implied consent. Question 33. Blunt trauma to the eye should be treated by, A. Covering neither eye. B. Covering the injured eye. C. Covering the uninjured eye. D. Covering both eyes. The correct answer is D. Covering both eyes. Question 34. You should assume that all unresponsive trauma patients have A. Choose the best answer. A. Head injury. B. Internal injury. C. Gag reflex. D. Spine injury. The correct answer is D. Spine injury. Question 35. It may be possible to resuscitate somebody who has been in cardiac arrest for more than 30 minutes if they are submerged in cold water. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is A. True. Question 36. In which case might you want to remove a penetrating object? A. An object in an eye. B. An object in a lung. C. An object in the airway. D. An object in a large muscle. The correct answer is C. An object in the airway. Question 37. A patient with a nose bleed should be positioned. A. On his back. B. On his side. The rescue position. C. Seated. Leaning back. D. Seated leaning forward. E. Seated, with head between knees. The correct answer is D. Seated, leaning forward. Question 38. Which of the following would be a closed injury? A. Abrasion. B. Amputation. C. Avulsion. D. Hematoma. E. Laceration. The correct answer is D. Hematoma. Question 39. Which type of fracture is more common in younger patients? A. Compound. B. Green stick. C. Spiral. D. Stress. E. Transverse. The correct answer is B. Green stick. Question 40. Bronchiole are smaller than alveolus. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is B. False. Question 41. Red blood cells fight infection. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is B. False. Question 42. The carpals are located near the A. Shoulder. B. Hand. C. Hip. D. Foot. The correct answer is B. Hand. Question 43. A 42-year-old male patient was involved in a house fire. His arms are charred black but the patient states he has little pain. This burn would be classified as A. Partial thickness. B. Minor. C. Full thickness. D. Superficial. The correct answer is C. Full thickness. Question 44. The pinna is part of the A. Ear. B. Foot. C. Genitals. D. Throat. E. Upper airway. The correct answer is A. Ear. Question 45. Protection, temperature regulation, and excretion are major functions of the A. Muscles. B. Liver. C. Skin. D. Blood vessels. The correct answer is C. Skin. Question 46. 
the pulse that can be palpated near the top of the foot is called the A carotid pulse, B dorsalis pedis pulse, C femoral pulse, D radial pulse, E posterior tibial pulse. The correct answer is B. Dorsalis pedis pulse. Question 47. The outer layer of the skin is called the A dermis. B subcutaneous layer. C epidermis. D subdura. The correct answer is C. Epidermis. Question 48. How many pairs of ribs are connected to the spine? A. 10. B. 11. C. 12. D. 13. E. 14. The correct answer is C. 12. Question 49. In an adult, a full thickness burn that involves 2% to 10% of the body surface is classified as a minor burn. B. Moderate burn. C. Critical burn. D. Circumferential burn. The correct answer is B. Moderate burn. Question 50. The scapula is located near the A back. B foot. C head. D hips. The correct answer is A. Back.